How's it going, everyone? What's that all about? <laughs> Maryland here, and it's time. Yes, it's finally time for more of Maryland's Pokemon Violet Adventure. I guess this is the title wants to tag along, right? <laughs> well, that's perfect because I get to take a picture of you. So this is on the new update. This is on update 2.0.1. This is after the Teal Mask DLC. So I'm gonna take a look at some of the things that have changed, even in the vanilla version. You don't need the DLC in order to experience these changes. And one of these changes is actually in the picture mode. So this is quite a bit different now. You can press the down button while taking a selfie to change your expression. Press the down button after using an emote to change your expression without changing your pose. Combine emotes and expressions to set up shots that are uniquely yours. You can play music while taking photos with the camera app by pressing ZL or ZR, which is very cool. And photographs taken using the camera app are saved to your Nintendo Switch system. So that actually addresses one of the problems that I ran into earlier, where, oh, hello, you're so cute. So yeah, you can change the music by pressing ZL or ZR. You can see it up in the top right corner. It's not actually going to do anything for wild Pokemon, but for any Pokemon that you send out, it does do that, which is pretty handy. So I can press Y and then do this, but I can also change my pose here. And then I think, how did it go? There was like another way of doing stuff. Eh, well, whatever. So there is something else you can get. This is just depressing. All right, let me switch that around. There is something else you can get in the DLC, kind of like a selfie stick, which is pretty cool, but you need to have gone to the DLC area in order to do that in Kami. So I'm not going to be able to do that. However, now if I press A, it saves the picture directly to your album, which is very nice. Previously, you had to press like minus in order to get rid of the little crosshair thing. I did complain about that a little bit. And now it's just so much more streamlined. Like this is really what you wanted to do. All right, thank you, Satatl. Really appreciate that. Something else I want to check out really fast. If I send out a Pokemon with ZR, whoops. Oh, is that a Glaceon? I didn't get a Glaceon earlier. Hey, <laughs> hold on, hold on. I got to get this thing first. Hi! And I caught him, first try, lovely. There we go, saying lovely again. Okay, so let's send out double W here. So something else you can do now, if you press the left control stick, you can have the Pokemon that you've sent out, you can have it just like stay in place. You'll see the little hand icon over its portrait in the bottom left. And this is great if you wanna take pictures of your Pokemon. You can finally just have them stay in place and that's what the music is for. So if you play the music for Pokemon of your own, <laughs> they'll then react, which is just adorable. So now I can get them to sleep or I can play the, the battle music and that gets them all fired up. They'll do their animation for that or there's the kind of happy, playful cheer and then they'll like jump. That's what the music's for. I love this. I think this is great. The only thing I kind of miss is I do wish there was a way to get rid of the crosshair on the screen. Doesn't seem you can now, which is kind of a shame. But honestly, it's so cool to be able to finally take good pictures of your Pokemon. Because previously, if you like sent them out, they'd just go all over the place and it was just a pain. Like if ever I wanted to take a picture of a Pokemon, I'd pretty much have to do that picture with a wild Pokemon. And, you know, ones that are out to get you, they're just gonna be a pain. So that's very handy. I'm very glad that they made that change. I think it was a, a very nice change. So last time I did mention I wanted to take on, ooh, Psyshock. I wanted to take on this area here. Ooh, and this is something I should talk about. So now you'll notice it said the Paldea region. Well. I don't have access to the DLC on this profile. I do have a solution to that. I know a few episodes ago, I kind of mentioned, oh no, I'm not gonna be able to do this because of, uh, yeah. But there's a workaround that I thought of. I can actually just transfer the saved data from this switch that I'm playing it on, 
to my primary one, and then problem solved. It's a weird situation, most people won't have to worry about it, but that solves my issue. However, after playing through the DLC, because I didn't play through it on my personal save files, like, kind of twice, which has been very handy, and I don't think I'm going to be doing that until post-game on here, because there's an item I get that will really kind of mess with the amount of experience points I get. I'm not going to say what it is, but if you played it, you'll kind of know. And already I'm pretty high level. So, just in case you're playing the DLC, this is a question I've got a few times. You're like, in the new area, Kitakami, you want to go back? You can just press L and R on the map, and that will take you between your regions. Like, if you see up here, it says the Paldea region. Well, if you press L and R, after you've gone to Kitakami, you'll be able to go. Which is helpful. They do explain it, but it's very easy to miss. So I felt the need to uh, kind of mention that. Something else that's really good I should mention. There's going to be a lot of, like, talking about what's changed. So just bear with me here. I know I mentioned I was going to fight against the the fairy Team Star base, but I'm probably going to do that next episode. There's a lot to cover in things that have changed. So you'll notice the boxes load so much faster. Like, this is reasonable. This is still a little slow compared to earlier versions, uh, or earlier, like, games. But overall, this is passable. Like, my old complaint of it being just so slow for these icons to load, they fixed that, and I appreciate that. Definitely feel the need to call that out, because that was something that I mentioned before, and it's fixed in the new update. Again, everything you see here does not require the DLC to be purchased. It's just, you know, with the version 2.0.1 update. Honestly, I think it's even 2.0, but I'm on 2.0.1, gosh darn it. And maybe it'll be later by the time you're watching this. Who knows? Hard to say. So, my next goal is I want to go over to this area here. Like, I know that there's this big area, but let's face it, this is going to take quite a bit of time. Kind of want to go over a few things here and there. But, you know, I need, a, I need a goal. I need something to do. Although, before I do, let me actually fly back really fast to a Pokemon Center. So, at the Pokemon Center, if you talk to Nurse Joy and you heal up, you'll still get some, uh, some new instructions. Alright, so even though I've gotten all of the instructions from Nurse Joy at the Pokemon Center, with the new update, there are some new tips to share, so that's kind of nice. This is the one I just went over. If you press the left stick, any of the Pokemon you've let out of their Pokeballs will stay put and wait for your signal. So that's very handy. Yeah, I did already know that, but it's very good to have explained, because, you know, how else would you really know? She's probably thinking to herself, didn't I just heal your Pokemon? Yeah, but I want another tip. So you can now adjust how the camera moves while you're exploring in the open world. These settings can be viewed under options in the main menu. Good thing to talk about. I'm not entirely sure how this works, so let's kind of go over it together. So in the options, there are new options available. So there's camera interpolation, which it changes the speed when the camera makes sudden large movement. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Camera distance, normal, close, and far. There are now three different modes for the camera, which I'll go over in a moment. And then the camera support. You can choose whether you want the camera to track you when you're using the left stick to move. So I guess you can have that turned on now. So if I'm just moving with this, see how it's kind of moving automatically? I'm not moving with the right stick. It's turning it automatically. But let's say you want it so it always, always is under your control. So in which case, I'm going to go here, and I'm just going to turn that to off. Now if I move, it's always going to be fixed in that direction. It won't turn unless I move the right control stick. So, you know, if that's the style you prefer, great. So also pressing in on the right control stick, you'll see there's now three levels of zoom. I feel like previously there was only two. There was just the close-up and then this kind of distant one. But now there's a happy medium, and you can set it at any point by going to the options. Whoops. Yeah, you can set it at any point by going to the options here for close, normal, or far. I'm going to turn camera support back on, but that's A-OK. -okay. 
So let's see what happens with this camera interpolation. In interpolation, I'm sorry. So it's kind of subtle, but as I'm zooming in and zooming out, it does go a little bit slower. It's not quite as sudden. So, you know, maybe if you found it a little jarring before, maybe it'll be a little easier for you. You again? <laughs> oh, all right. With all the little tidbits that I've shared, you probably know just about everything you ought to know about venturing. For real! Right, okay. So I guess that's all. However, over here, the TM machine, the technical machine machine, you can now filter for learnable moves. Oh, thank goodness. So if you do, I want to filter for learnable moves. Now you have the option of just seeing any of your Pokemon like the moves that it will learn, which is great. So when viewing TMs in the TM machine, you can press X to select a Pokemon currently in your party. Or if you do filter by learnable moves from the menu, you get to choose from here. So now I can just say, okay, what TMs can my Cloth here learn? And it shows only these moves that Cloth can learn. Like it, it just kind of hides that. And that's great. That's super awesome. I can also press X and wait, no, that's not it. How did it go? There was a, uh, there's a way that I can do only ones craftable TMs first. Yeah, if I press minus, and I think this was in here previously, but this helps filter it by things that are craftable first. I feel like if you pressed X in the past, it just hid any that weren't, but now, you know, it, it kind of shows everything, which is great. So let's press X again. I can go over here and yeah, it's, Super handy, very useful. I applaud them for making this change. It'll be a lot easier to see what moves your Pokemon can learn in this TM thing. And of course, you can always press L and R to toggle between the types. So that's very handy. And you can even press X, or I'm sorry, not X, plus to watch for a move. So let's say I need, uh, I need Sandile Claws. If I press plus here, when I get the number of Sandile Claws or Whooper Slime or whatever I'm missing, when I get that, it'll let me know on my uh, my little progress meter up top, right? Doesn't it show it somewhere? Yeah, if I press right, this shows my progress for TM machine tracking. So that's kind of cool if you're looking for something. That was actually there in the old version. I just never really talked about it. But, you know, it could be kind of handy now. I better turn it off, though. Also, any moves that you watch will appear at the top of these lists. So that's kind of handy. There are also a lot of new TMs, which is great. However, you do need to visit Kitakami in order for them to unlock. There's a lot of stuff that does unlock if you go to Kitakami, but there is still plenty to do even if you haven't visited Kitakami. Like, there's plenty of updates, and that's what I'm trying to show today. Like, I'm sorry it's not a very exciting episode, but I feel like it's important because, you know, knowing what's changed, I think, can be very helpful. And a lot of people will just jump right into the DLC, but you might not be interested in it. Okay, so I want to go over here, this area, so I think I'm going to fly back to the finger. Oh, lovely, it's a blizzard. Great, just what I needed. So I need to get over there somehow. Let's see if I can go there from this little path. Ooh, what do we have here? Items, very nice. Man, it is like impossible to see over here. Jeez, when it starts snowing and then when it's nighttime, it is just really bad news. All right, well, I see something right here. What is this? It's a pin kerchin, a level 55 pin kerchin. Hmm. Sure, let's go ahead and fight it. Oh no, it's an electric type pin kerchin. Which I mean, it's normally electric type anyway, so that just means it's going to be powering up its electric type moves by a lot. Okay, I broke its bulb. Sadly, one thing they did not fix is that critical capture glitch or whatever you want to call it. So yeah, it's still, you know, if it's a Pokemon you already have, that the only way you're going to see it be caught is with a critical capture. Taking a look at this thing, it's pretty decent. Lightning Rod, Zing Zap, Poison Jab, Surf, Sucker Punch. I mean, pretty nice. Good moves. 
Ooh, a comet shard right here. That's pretty nice. And sell that for a good amount of money. And then, oh man. I don't know how I can get over there. I don't think there is anything over there. Like, I don't have the ability to cross the water right now or ride on the water. So I'm not sure how far I'll be able to go over here. But I definitely want to check it out. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's the ruins from last time. They're down there. Hmm. All right, let's see if I can dash and jump. Woo! All right, cool. I can make it. I wasn't entirely sure if I'd be able to. Over here, there's Thunderbolt. So that's a really nice TM to have. I already have a Vaporeon. But Thunderbolt is very worthwhile. <sighs> so I don't know how I'm going to be able to get in there. There's a Weavile, but I already have a Weavile. So how do I get there? I think I'm going to need to have the ability to surf, right? Probably. Let's see. Oh, no. No. Well, you know me. I'll find a way. <laughs> there is a way to get over there, gosh darn it. Okay, can I make it from this side? No! Okay, I made it over to this little island. No, wait, I was on there. You can do it right on. Psyduck, no. Yes, there we go. Okay, this should get me up here. This is uh, quite the angle. Thanks for the assist, Psyduck. No! Oh no! My double W fell! Into the water! Okay, I am up. But I'm not actually on the island I need to get to. It's that one over here. I'm hoping I can jump over there to get there. Now, normally if you can swim, this isn't going to be a problem. But, you know, I like to just make things difficult on myself, don't I? Uh-oh! Okay, let's see if I can make this jump. This should be a little easy. There we go. No! I mean, maybe I can just make it over there. Alright, let's try it. Oh no, I messed that one up for sure. Thanks for saving me, Psyduck! Ah! Uh, okay, let's try this again. Gonna hop over here. Try not to fall into the water. Alright, so far so good. Okay, let's do this. No! I'm over! Yes! Okay, now I just need to climb this thing without, you know, the ability to climb. That's gonna be fun. Woo! Oh no! Oh wait, I'm here! Okay, great. So what's in here? What was all this for? It was for Focus Blast, which, eh, you know, it's a pretty good TM. But now I'm stuck. Alright, no, you can do it! Ah! Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I like to do silly things like that. Like, you know, I could just wait, but there's just something about the challenge, right? Like, it's kind of fun trying to go somewhere that you wouldn't normally be able to go. I find it fun. Like, maybe you should try that too if you're just looking for something to do. Ooh, an experienced candy L up here on this little cliffside. Or wherever the heck this is. This is kind of like in a boring area. There's really nothing here. Although I do see a cave up there. Alright, you know what that means. If I'm not mistaken, this is a pretty good cave. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, this is a decent spot to find Frigibax. Which is cool. And there's a rare bone. Is that really all that's in here? Shoot! I guess it is. I do think you do find Frigibax there pretty commonly, though. But I could have sworn there was something more there. Hope you're not afraid of heights! Oh boy! That's a steep fall. I do kind of want to go down here, though. Yeah, there's another cave right over here by this edge. I did mention quite a while ago there are caves everywhere. So, where does this one lead? Or rather, what's in it? There's... Another rare bone. Who put all these bones here? And then up here, there's 
Wild Charge! Very powerful electric type move! Sorry, that Snorun got me. Yeah, very powerful electric type move, but it does have a lot of recoil damage, so... Eh, I don't know if I want to teach it or not. There's also a Gimme Ghoul here. So I was down there a few episodes ago. That was a place that I have visited. But this place over here, it's a pain to get to. Like, you know, you're probably not getting up here without the ability to climb. Let's be real. That's fine, but I had to check it out, you know. However, there is something... Well, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it up here, because I don't remember exactly where it is. But I know over in this area... Spoilers! There is one of those stakes that you're looking for. And this one is very, very, uh... It's very subtle. Like, I... Man, you wouldn't think to find it here. It's just way, way out in the middle of nowhere! All right, well, whatever. I fell down, found some iron. Maybe this isn't where I was. I think maybe I was further down? I'm not sure. There's iron, there's carbos, there's calcium. That seems pretty worthwhile. Oh, wait, I think... No, that's not it. That is something. There's a TM up there. Well, I don't think I can get to this TM, unfortunately. I think I'd have to fall down from above in order to get that. Speaking of falling down from above, yeah, I think I'm kind of stuck here. Well, maybe not. Oh, no, I'm good. All right, so what's up here? Aura Sphere. Haha, <laughs> I rhymed. That wasn't even intentional. Another experience candy, L. Very good. Those I always try to point out, because that's 10,000 free experience. That is very worthwhile. This is kind of terrifying, I'm not going to lie, but there's a big nugget up here by this... Big drop. A little hard to see, but I do see a cave over there. I want to check that out. Oh, man. All right, so I'm in Casaroya Lake, technically, over here, which is kind of funny if you think about it. This doesn't look like a lake. But, yeah, this area over here. Ooh, is that a froth frost moth? I think I have one. Yeah, I do. Because I joked about, what's his name, Drusha, not having a higher level one. But, yeah, this is Casaroya Lake. It's just a very high up portion of it, I guess. And then over here, further along, oh man, it's Spirit Tomb again. Okay, okay, I gotta, I gotta try. Gotta try. Okay, Quick Ball, don't fail me now. No! Don't do it! No! So there's a Gimme Ghoul right here, and there's also this lovely kind of autumn looking area here, which is called Sakura Trail. So Carrot Trail, Sak- I, I don't know, whatever. It's very cool, very, very pretty. I love that area, but I'm not going to check it out. Like, it's pretty darn high level, and that's not really, you know, oh, there it is. This is the one, all right, right here. Look at what a pain this is to get okay now i've mentioned before i'm just gonna look look but don't touch but yeah this is one of those stakes and i believe this is one of the eastern or western stakes i'm sorry one on this side which i haven't really been on western paldea now have i so yeah or maybe it's northern i don't remember it actually the the color of the stake corresponds to the color of the compass so you see how that's yellow on the the, well, on my left right now, well, that means it's you're going to find the yellow stakes over here. So I'm going to be eventually compiling all of these into one video. But yeah, now you know where one of them is. And this one is a pain. So I really wanted to find it. I just couldn't remember exactly where it was. Okay, let me see what's inside of this cave here. Oh, is this just a tunnel? I think it's just a tunnel. Yeah, it is. Just goes over to Casaroya Lake proper. I mean, well, not fully down by the lake, but I'll take Iron Head, though. That's really good. And then there's a lovely view. Oh, I want to get that TM, but I really don't want to check this place out too much. That isn't on my destination list, all right? It just, it isn't, okay? Although there is another pathway to get here <laughs> if I go this route. I mean, I'll just, I'll take a very, very brief look. See, isn't it pretty? All right, all right. I'm going to follow the same kind of, you know, principle. I'm going to look. 
Not gonna touch, we're just gonna check it out just a little bit. Just a peek, kind of like the northeastern area, but there's like Raichu. There's, uh, what is this? Oh yeah, it's Sarina, level 65. No, 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 I'll save it for later, don't worry, don't worry. But yeah, it's a very cool area, very pretty. There's high level stuff, like level 50s, I think. And it's kind of near the end of your journey. I mean, you can go there anytime. Ah, I think I'm about as far as I can go without flying away. Like, I don't think there's anywhere else I even can go right now. Something very handy that they added in this update, which I haven't really seen yet, but in your Pokedex, well, first of all, if you've been to Kitakami, it will show up in a little book next to this Pokedex, and it keeps track of them separately. But if you go in here and you press X, well, right now you see two more volumes until your next reward. And in the past, it used to be a pain to remember to go in here and then remember to press X and all of that just to, you know, pick up your stuff. So I like one nice thing that they changed. They actually do notify you if you have enough Pokedex entries to get a reward now, which is great. It's brilliant. I'm glad that they added that. Let me see if there's anything that I can catch really fast that I can kind of show this. Okay, so I have two Pokemon here that evolved from stones. I need to get two Pokemon in my Pokedex anyway. Let's just evolve them. I'll need to do it at some point, right? Let's go ahead and use a sweet apple on Applin. Haha, I got an apple pie! Dragon. Lovely. You know, Appleton is actually very, very short. It's only one foot four. Wow, I only have two Moonstones? I'm kind of surprised. Oh, well, let's go ahead and use one on this Jigglypuff to turn it into Wigglytuff. Ta-da! Or should I say, Yumta, right? Great, and now when I leave the menu, for some reason that triggered my outbreaks changing. That's weird. But it says you can claim a reward for the progress you've made in the Pokedex. So that shows up every time you've got 10 new Pokemon in any of the Pokedexes, actually. Like, this works for Kitakami as well. So it's a good way to remind you to check this thing, because previous to this version, that was not the case. You'd actually have to remember to go in there and check it from time to time. And a lot of people didn't even know you could do that. So I do applaud them for kind of making that a little bit easier to figure out. Woo, so I flew back to the Pokemon Center. There was an outbreak of Satoddle, which is kind of neat, but there's also a Gardevoir in the wild, which is great. I need a Gardevoir. And my first quick ball worked against it. Something I don't like, it kind of flashed by pretty quickly, but now on the, like, the register to new Pokemon screen, like, for some reason, it doesn't load in all of the icons right away. Like, it's strange. It shows little placeholder Pokeball silhouette icons, and I don't like that. I think that's kind of unfortunate, and that wasn't always the case. Like, I do appreciate the fact that they have made it so it loads faster in the boxes. Like, that's way more convenient. But it's just kind of frustrating to look at it and see, oh, this is not what it's supposed to be. Very frustrating indeed. So I apparently haven't checked this area out. There seems to be a lot of items and a lot of trainers. Where is this? Oh, this is like going down that slope, I guess. Just near the, the top part of it. Huh. Okay, let's fight the delivery man. What's up? I'm a courier fan. I just like to dress up like this. You're like that kind of guy that goes to Best Buy wearing a blue shirt and just answers people's questions, even though you don't work there. <laughs> this is a little scary because if I switch out, like close combat's going to hurt. I'm just going to go for it. Okay, well, it didn't even use close combat. It used takedown, so I guess it did more damage to itself than it did to me. Have some rocks! Please sign here! No, you just said that you're a fake! You're just dressing up that way. I'm not signing. 
And then there's this person over here. That's right. Meowth? That's right, I'm totally lost. Well, there's a Pokemon Center right over there. Ooh, a Tauros. So that is an Aqua Breed Tauros. It's water fighting type. So that's kind of a cool thing to see. This is not a good matchup for me, though. I should switch out. What? Wait, what? Why did... Why did Revelation Dance fail? Huh? It doesn't affect Tauros. Why? Wait, what? No, no, what's going on here? <laughs> Why is it not affecting Tauros? Am I... Am I mistaken on Tauros's type? Is it a... Dark type? No, what? I mean, I'm a psychic type or a choreo. I don't know why it. It's like. Oh, I've been had! I've been had! Ah! <laughs> she got me so good. I was just pulling my hair out. It's like, what the heck? Why is this not working? What am I doing wrong? Okay, let's try this again. This is the real Tauros. I was thinking I still had the ghost type or a choreo revelation dance or something and like maybe it was a normal type because that wouldn't affect normal Tauros. So that's like kind of why it took me a moment because it's just such a weird like situation with Oricorio and how it changes its moves and all that and its type of the move. And then Tauros with its different forms. I don't know. It was just... She got me. She got me! She got me. This is actually a pretty peaceful pathway up to Monte Nevera, by the way. Like, I took a kind of strange route to get to Monte Nevera, but this is a nice wide open path there. This is probably the standard route you take because this comes in from a dolly down here. So you just follow this path. You go up to this Pokemon Center. You kind of go, I think you go around and then you meet in like here somewhere, like I think. Okay, we found her spot. We found this person's spot right here. This is my spot. Yep, a black tax trainer. This is my spot. If you want to camp, go find a spot of your own. So she has a level 41 camera. Hmm. One dive was enough to take it down. She's also got a little Dedenne, so let's go ahead and use poison jab on it. Go, Marimobile! Lastly, she's got a Vault and Veluza! There, I just vaulted that Veluza. Oh, are you just here for a hike, not to camp? Yep, that is correct. Yep, so you just keep going up this path here until you reach this kind of rock, and then you turn. You do like a 180, and then you keep going up. And this will take you all the way up to Monte Nevera. And then there's this guy. Remember I fought this guy. He told me a little bit about Grusha's backstory. So, you know, if you were going from Madali to Monte Nevera, this is, like, the path you take. And it's a pretty nice path. Like, I like it. It's just fine. I just didn't take it. Alright, anyway, I think that about does it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sorry it was a little, like you know, explanation heavy and showing you menus and things like that. But it's the kind of stuff that I think is helpful for, you know, like showing you what's changed in an update. And especially this is on a version without the DLC. I think showing some of the things that have changed even without that well, hopefully was helpful. But I felt it was important to talk about nonetheless. I think next time it is finally time to take on the Ruck Boss Squad. Yeah, we're going after Ortega. So anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Maryland's Pokemon Violet Adventure. See you next time, everyone.